Today we are going to discuss not one, not two, but three hacks for crushing low stakes cash games. Tip number one is to exploit your opponents while playing good, strong, fundamentally sound GTO poker will win money at low stakes cash games. You will win far more money by correctly pinpointing and then adjusting to exploit each of your particular opponent's errors. If you go and you play cash games and you play a default strategy that might even be pretty good poker and you use that strategy against all of your opponents, you are making a blunder. You are leaving a lot of money on the table. You need to pay attention, which means not browsing on Twitter on your phone, not reading a book, not watching TV. You need to pay attention and actively pinpoint and then adjust to the mistakes your opponents are making. And fortunately for you, in the small stakes games, your opponents are going to be making all sorts of mistakes. How do I know that? A lot of people think their opponents are all really, really good. They're not in the small stakes games because if they were really, really good, they would be winning money from the game. And if they win money from the game, they'll get a bankroll very quickly. Turns out you can have a very big win rate in small stakes games. And if you develop a bankroll quickly, you typically move up and play bigger games. Your opponents in the small stakes games, though, have not moved up. To be fair, you haven't either, which means they're making mistakes left and right. So if they're making all sorts of mistakes, you will have a lot of adjustments that you can make to crush your opponents. Let's discuss how to beat a few different types of players. First, let's discuss how to crush straightforward players. So many players in the small stakes games look at their cards, and if they like their cards, they put money in the pot. And if they don't, they don't put money in the pot. So when these players typically put money in the pot, they're aggressive when they have strong hands. So when they are being aggressive, what should you do in general? Well, you should be overfolding with strong but non-premium made hands. If you're playing against a good strong player, if you make top pair and the board runs out kind of uncoordinated, you are not trying to fold. But against someone who is very straightforward, it's a pretty good time to get out of the way. Say you raise king seven suited on the button and the straightforward big blind calls. And the flop comes king nine two. They check, you continuation bet, they call. Say the turn's a three. They check, you bet again with top pair. And then I'll, they raise you. You should fold. Top pair, marginal kicker, in this scenario is awful. If a straightforward player check raises you on the turn and you do not have a very good hand, overfold. Realize that you do not need to pay these opponents off. You do not need to see what they have or see if they have it. I can tell you, they have it and you need to get out of the way. Every once in a while, maybe they're bluffing you with some sort of straight flush draw or something like that but that's okay. They get to get away with straight flush draw bluffs. Do not pay these players off. That said, these players also play cautiously without strong hands. So when they check, you should be looking to apply aggression, especially if you know or are pretty sure that they will fold all but the best hands to a flop bet, turn bet, and river bet. These players are excellent to triple barrel where you bet the flop and the turn and the river, assuming you use a large bet size on the river. Because whenever you blast it, if they have worse than two pair, they're going to fold. And to make things easier for you, they usually check raise top pair good kicker on the flop. So they don't have top pair and good kicker or better on the flop. And they'll usually raise with two pair on the turn. So pretty much they have to river you in order for you to lose the pot when they check call the flop and check call the turn. If you can just bet flop, bet turn, blast river, and get them to fold, you're going to win tons of pots and lots and lots of equity. Let's discuss how to crush the loose, splashy players. These are players who look to see lots of flops with a wide range. They want to see if they can make a good hand. These are not the loose, aggressive, battly players. These are players who just want to call a whole lot, see a lot of flops, and go from there. Against these players, you want to 3-bet with a good, strong, linear range. Normally in position, you want to be 3-betting with a polarized range of your best hands and some hands that are not quite good enough to call. But against these players, you're going to want to 3-bet with just good, strong hands because they're going to call with all sorts of stuff that you dominate. It's really, really good to play in position, dominating your opponent. They are going to get demolished. Also, they want to see the turn in the river very often. So, in spots where you may normally continuation bet using a small size, you may find that you can use larger sizes against these players, especially with your value hands. 
and then you'll just extract more money from their hands that are gonna call, like bottom pair or gut shot straight draw. Against these players, you wanna use larger sizes for value. Now, obviously that's very exploitative if you use larger sizes for value and perhaps smaller sizes as bluffs. And if these players will figure that out, maybe they'll start check raising you a ton. And if they do start check raising you a ton when you bet small, you're gonna need to adjust and play closer to the game theory optimal strategy. But again, if your opponents are just playing loosey goosey, they're eating their sandwich, they're trying to make their gut shot straight by the river, and they're not really paying attention to what you're doing, you should adjust to exploit them. My second hack for crushing low stakes cash games is to choose the best table and seat. The great thing about cash games is that you get to pick when and where you play. And you'll find that you will win far more money as your opponents make more and more mistakes. So you want to make a point to play in the loose, splashy, gambly games. Well, how do you know if a game is loose and splashy and gambly? You pay attention. You look around. Maybe make friends who will help you find the good tables. One time, I went to a casino in Philadelphia for the day with my father-in-law just to hang out and play some cards. He wanted to go play some cards. I went with him. I went in there, and there were two 510 No Limit tables, the two biggest games in the room. One of them, everyone was sitting there with sunglasses on, hoodies, headphones, and they weren't talking to anyone. That was a serious table. You could hear a pen drop. But then, a few tables away was another 510 table, and they were throwing a party. It was insane. They were all laughing, gambling, standing up, high-fiving, goofing off. It was absurd. Which table do you think you'll win more money at? The one where everyone's trying to win or the ones where everyone's having a party? Obviously the party. So I went and I partook in their party and had a lot of fun and won a bunch of money. You get to pick the table that you sit at. Now, if you, when I did go there, they put me at the bad table, the table full of good players. So what do you do? You get on the table change list. Talk to the floor person, get on the table change list. Eventually they moved me to the good table. It didn't take very long because someone went broke. They were going broke left and right over there. So they moved me over there and then... I got to that table. Now, now that I'm at this good table, you have to decide if you want to try to get the best seat at that table. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But chips flow to the left in games of position, like No Limit Hold'em and most other poker games. So you want to be in position against the worst players. And you don't want to be like overly predatory with this to the point that you're like, haha, you're bad at poker, I'm going to get position on you. But... You know, if there's an open seat and you think it's better than yours, there's nothing wrong with taking it. Don't be overly aggressive with this, but you do want to make a point to play in the softest stable and ideally in the best seat. And if you can figure out a way to do this in a way that consistently puts you in that spot, you're going to make way more money than people who do not do that. So that's hack number two. If you want to have a huge win rate, take the best seat at the best table. Hack number three. This is something a lot of you do not like to do. You tell me about it in the comment section all the time. You do not like to keep a proper bankroll. And that makes you mad and frustrated and tilted when you lose. Because, well, you're out of money. And I get it that it'd be frustrating to be out of money. If you do not have money, you cannot play. Even if you are the best poker player in the world, playing against the worst players, you will experience a lot of variance. It happens. Get used to it. Don't be entitled and think you're always going to win. So many players put something like $400 each month in their poker bank roll. Then they go and they play one to no limit and they lose two buy-ins and they can't believe it happened. Unbelievable. How could I lose two buy-ins? Maybe even they double it up to four buy-ins. Then they lose their four buy-ins or they double it up to eight buy-ins and they move up in stakes. Then they lose four buy-ins there. <sighs> you got to stop gambling. Realize poker is a great way to get rich slowly and a horrible way to get rich quick because you will go on decently big downswings. It happens to everyone. Get used to it. Plan ahead and keep a proper bankroll. And if you do that, you will always be in the action. By the way, in order to figure out how big of a bankroll you need, you, know, you need to know how big of an edge you have in the game. How do you know how big of an edge you have? Well, you can't guess. Guessing doesn't work. You need to keep track of your results. You need to figure out how many big blinds you are winning per hour or per, or per 100 hands. And that will let you know roughly how many buy-ins you need, assuming you either want to go broke some portion of the time, not very often, or basically never. Here we have proper bankroll requirements based on your win rate. And this presumes you play a normal-ish strategy, not too insane, not too nitty. 
And it also presumes that you want a relatively low chance of going broke. And to be fair, you can always move down in stakes and double your bankroll. So if you're winning at three big blinds per hundred hands, which is one big blind per hour at one, two, these numbers presume we're playing one, two over here. If you're playing one to no limit, you're gonna need something like 20,000 bucks. A pretty big bankroll. Most online players are winning something like three to five big blinds per hundred hands. These are reasonable win rates at, at online poker. Doesn't sound like much, but that's what you can beat online for. And because of that, you need something like 10,000 or 8,000 big blinds in your bankroll. $20,000 for one to no limit. If you're a very big winning live player, maybe you're winning something like 10 big blinds per hour, which is roughly something like 25 big blinds per 100 hands. If that's the case, you don't actually need much of a bankroll at all. Only 20 buy-ins. Remember I just said a lot of people work all month, they get $400 set aside as their extra gambling money, and then they take it and they go play poker. They have $400. Is that anywhere near 4,000? No, it's not. That's not gonna work out for them. And look, I mean, I, there's no way around it. You're gonna experience variance. Even if you are crushing the game for 10 big blinds per hour, you still need something like 4,000 bucks at one to no limit or 2,000 big blinds for whatever game you are playing. Make a point to keep a proper bankroll because that's going to ensure you stay in action. And if you're in action, you can continue to choose the best seat and exploit your opponents and make a ton of money from poker. I have a article that you may want to check out at pokercoaching.com slash bankroll. It has all sorts of bankroll information there. Make sure you reference it. Realize, to win at poker, you really only have to do three things. They're easier said than done and no one wants to do them. But if you do, you will win. Tip number one, not even tip number one, mandatory thing you must do number one is find a game you can beat. If you are not a winner in your game, you are going to lose, no matter what you do. So you either need to get really good at poker, or you need to find really, really bad players to play against. Either one. If you want to get really good at poker, check out pokercoaching.com. If you want to find really bad players to play against, well, uh, get really good at table and game selection. The second thing you must do is you must play that game a lot so you actually extract your edge from the game. If you only play two hours a week, you shouldn't expect to win a whole lot of money. Even if you are crushing the games for 25 big blinds per 100 hands and you're playing one, two, well, that means you're going to make, what, 40 big blinds in two hours. 80 bucks. You want to make 80 bucks every week if you're only going to play two hours a week? It's not going to work out. You need to get in there and actually put your butt in the chair and grind. And the third thing you must do is you have to keep a proper bankroll because that's going to keep you in action. If you consistently do these three things, you will thrive. And if you don't, well, you're just gambling. That's me for today. I hope you enjoyed these three hacks. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Do me a favor. Click the like and subscribe button down there before you go. If you have another hack that you want to share with everyone in the comment section, I'm sure they would love to hear it. Go down there. Write it in. We'll all thrive together. I'll talk to you next time.